And um, I think people are looking at this all wrong, um, uh, on my colleagues across the aisle. And in considering this, like I do things involving the military, involving the safety of our country, uh, as some of our Republican leaders will tell you, I don't play politics. I'm really considering what I believe is best for the country. And having represented people who were foreigners who joined the military uh, in criminal matters, uh, let, let me explain how we really should be looking at that process. People were brought in and were told, look, we're going to let you come into the United States and you're going to be on probation. You're going to serve in the military. If you serve honorably, you don't break our American laws, state laws. If you, if you can serve honorably and well without breaking the law, then you got a shot to being a U.S. citizen. You know, so along the way, these folks committed crimes. They were getting, and please understand, they were getting paid. Usually they were provided housing or a housing allowance. They were provided medical free. All of these things were provided as part of the agreement. But as soon as they committed a crime, then they breached the agreement and the agreement required that they go back to their home. I didn't realize that on average, these convictions were 10 to 20 years old. Uh, but I have seen, and my understanding is normally if it's a crime within the military, they may serve the sentence. They may not. They may be deported before, but usually they'll serve the sentence. And then they're deported. End of contract. You breached. You pay the price for the crime. That's not part of the deal. But then the deal is you go back home. And I do know that most people that join the military, uh, it does take courage. And especially if you're a Chinese spy and you're going to come into the United States, that takes a lot of courage to come into the military this way. But other countries that want to see our demise, they see how vulnerable we are because of this kind of thing. Uh, there was no proper vetting when people were brought in to the military for foreign countries. A lot of times they just got proof of identity. That's good enough. We don't look for the crimes they may have already committed. Uh, but this bill does not, as has been said, it doesn't consider the victims. They ought to have a voice. And let me tell you, especially in the military, drug sale, drug transfers, they're not victimless. They do more damage to the overall uh, preparedness of our military. They do great damage to the military itself. The military and America's preparedness for our enemies is dramatically affected by that. So um, understand, there's not anything rotten about America. This program was offered in a big hearted way, but it was an agreement. It was an agreement that was breached by these folks. Uh, when, when I hear people say they serve so bravely, uh, let me tell you, uh, having represented some folks uh, that, that were engaged in this scenario, they weren't brave. They were very destructive. So just keep that in mind. They weren't all Audie Murphy, uh, you know. So uh, one other thing, uh, there is not apparently going to be proper vetting because the same Homeland Security Secretary who told us that the border is secure and lied about that what, what and has created an open, no, thank you. Uh, has left an open wound on our southern border that is just being infected worse and worse every day. We don't know who all is coming in. There's the kind of discretion we can expect. The Mayorkas will look the other way. All is good. All is right. Uh, God's in his heaven. It's all good. It's not. 
These are not the people to give discretion to. We need the to pass this amendment. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from California seek recognition? The gentleman is recognized. Uh, if, if, thank you for yielding. I'll just point out that if you're dishonorably discharged, you're not eligible for this program. So the scenario that our colleague from Texas just uh, outlined, that, that person would not be eligible. And I thank the gentleman for yielding.